So what is a chemical and why should we be concerned? Andrews, welcome to the, pro welcome to the, welcome to the program. <laughs> Pardon me. Thank you very much. Uh, nice to be speaking with you today. Yeah, it's it's a fascinating topic. We're talking about these uh, fluorine, uh, uh, toxic fluorinated chemicals. Uh, PFAS is one of them. There's there's a few others. They all seem to have an F in there for fluorine. Um, where what are these chemicals? Where did they come from, and why do you call them forever chemicals? So they're they're more commonly referred to as the Teflon and Scotchgard chemicals, mm -hmm. associated with the, with the the consumer products that people are are very much aware. Uh, but as you said, this is a large family of chemicals. They all have fluorine in them, and they're called forever chemicals because once released into the environment, they do not break apart. And so that's part of the reason they found widespread use. But that's also what's led to enormous contamination of our water across the country. And these chemicals actually can be detected in nearly every single person's blood in the entire country. Wow. And, now, and, and these are the chemicals that, that initially it was like, you know, they're like flame retardants and things. Initially it was like, these things don't break down, so we can put them on the, on the, on the carpet or on the furniture. And because they don't break down, you'll have, you know, resistance to fire for 30, 40, 50 years, you know, the lifetime of the couch, 10 years, whatever. Um, That's but, right. No but, stains, the water repellent, the water will roll right off, your wine. Um, you know, really that, that grease resistance also is, is what helped them fight in widespread use, including in all of our textiles, most outerwear jackets. These, these chemicals are incredibly common. They're actually put into food wrappers also um, so that the grease wouldn't soak through the wrapper. Are these the chemicals that are also in the inside of paper cups so that they don't leak? That's actually a little bit different. Those are really plastic coatings. These, these same chemicals are not found in the paper cups, at least okay. in, in our recent testing. Okay. So why should we worry about these chemicals lasting forever and, and showing up in the blood of all of us? So it turns out that at incredibly low concentrations in water, parts per trillion, these chemicals are actually impacting health. Um, and, and we're seeing in, in studies just done in the last few years that these chemicals in your blood reduce the effectiveness of vaccines. Um, they can actually uh, raise your cholesterol level. And then at higher doses, they're associated with a whole host of, of other really horrible health effects, um, a number of different types of cancer, as well as um, pregnancy, birth outcomes. Uh, it, these chemicals really kind of hit every single one of our body functions and not in a good way. Whoa. So, uh, A, is there an effort to regulate these chemicals? And B, how do we avoid them uh, given that they're present right now? Um, there, there are some ongoing efforts to regulate them. I will say that the process has become so convoluted at EPA, especially in terms of setting new regulations for drinking water contaminants. Not a single new one has been set in over two decades that I wouldn't Whoa. hold your breath for the EPA to take leadership. But uh, many states are setting regulations, and, and we've actually really put a lot of effort into making tap water contaminant information available for the whole country. So that's on our website, ewg.org. You can type in your zip code. It'll report which contaminants were detected, if PFAS contaminants were detected. Um, and then it provides ways that you can actually filter these contaminants out of your water. How do you, how do you filter them out? Is it just your basic Brita filter kind of, you know, commercial products? So the Brita filter works reasonably well, um, but but not as consistently as as, as sometimes you'd, you'd want, especially for these contaminants. Mm -hmm. um, there's a reverse osmosis filter, which is a bit more expensive, installs under the sink, um, will definitely remove all those contaminants, and easy to check that it's that it's working. Interesting, interesting. And and you you said that this is in wrappers for foods and things. I mean, what are, if you're if you're if you're shopping? What are the things that you want to avoid in order to avoid these chemicals? Right. So a recent study actually found that people who ate food at home, prepared their own meals, actually had low, lower levels of these chemicals just because they are more common in, in takeout food uh, wrappers and the, the bags from takeout food. Um, so that's, that's one easy step there is, is really just minimizing, you know, cooking at home. Right. Um, and the, the one food that I'd recommend you know, steering away from as much as possible is, is the microwave popcorn, just because those bags were really coated in it. And studies going back over a decade now show that people who consume microwave popcorn have much higher levels in their blood. Wow. So, so if, I, if I order you know, from one of these 
delivery services. If I order, you know, food from a from a Thai restaurant or an Italian or whatever it may be, you know, um, it, are you saying that the the carryout packaging is is coated with these Teflon like these PFAS chemicals? Quite often, but really, there's no way to know, and that's mm -hmm. why we're really calling on states and the government to. These are unnecessary chemicals. They don't need to be there. There are replacements, and so they're not in every single wrapper. They're not in every carryout container, but they're in a lot of them, and they're, they're pervasive across the food system. And so simple, simple regulatory steps could just get these off the market and end that exposure route. If, if these chemicals live forever and they have these uh, negative health consequences ranging all the way up to cancer uh, for humans, what, what are the consequences of these chemicals to other living things in our biosphere. I mean, our, you know, we know that some of the chemicals that interrupt hormones, for example, uh, you know, the, the early flag that we saw was changes in fish and frogs and things. Um, are we seeing the consequence of these, uh, these uh, f f fluorinated chemicals in, in, in the environment as a whole? There are a, a number of studies, and actually you can detect these chemicals in um, animal species across the globe, polar bears, whales, really any type of species. Um, humans don't, do seem to be the most susceptible to harm from these. Um, it's not to say that other, other species in the environment are escaping harm, but, but humans definitely seem to be the most sensitive uh, to impacts on the hormone, hormone system, reproduction, and as I mentioned, these immune system, cholesterol impacts.